Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry, and I'm back with a brand new digital tutorial for you. So I have been creating these fun little cover pages for my digital journals, and I've been getting a lot of questions about how I create them, and I thought I'd film a little tutorial for you to show you how I achieve this look. So I have a few here that I've done as an example. Let's see, this is the one I did for my 2019 digital planner. So I have my goals on the front of the page there. I also have my Appalachian Trail journal, of course. And then I have another one for my Kanmari journal for tidying our house. Uh, this one I haven't used very much, confession time, because we haven't done a ton of kanmari yet. But I just wanted to show you what can be accomplished when you're thinking of like being creative with your journal covers. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my gallery here and I'm basically inside of a stack. Uh, stacks are ways to organize different things in your Procreate app. So I'm in a stack that I have that's called Planner Pages. So this is where I play around with all my different layouts and things that I'm designing for my planner or for my journals. Now, as far as canvas size goes, I found the best thing to do to get the correct canvas size is to actually export one of your planner pages from your planner in GoodNotes and export that as an image. So I'm gonna go into GoodNotes here. I'm using GoodNotes 5 currently, but you can also do this with GoodNotes 4. And I'm going to grab my planner. Let's grab, for example, my 2019 planner. It really doesn't matter what page you export, you're just trying to get the correct size. So just whatever page your planner is on, you are going to hit this little arrow button up here, export this page. And I'm gonna export this as an image and hit export. And then save image. So that's gonna save that to my camera roll. So now I can go back to Procreate and I'm gonna bring in that photo as the base of my canvas. So I'm gonna tap photo in the top right hand corner here, go to all photos and grab that very last one that I brought in. And now I have the perfect canvas size that's gonna match my planner in GoodNotes. All right, so I'm actually going to get rid of this layer entirely. I'm gonna clear that. So we're starting with a completely blank canvas. We just know that it's the right size, the right dimensions to fit in with the other pages of our planner. So for these cover pages, I like to bring in a cool like desktop looking background. I have a few that I have saved in my files. So I'm gonna drag up here to open my files app side by side. There we go. And let's see what we got here. I think I have it saved iCloud Drive backgrounds. These I purchased from Creative Market and I'll try to link those down below in the description box for you. But they're just some pretty like pastel uh, 12 by 12 backgrounds. They're kind of meant for scrapbooking, but I just thought they were so pretty like with these washed kind of pastelish colors. So I've been using these. You can of course search websites like Pixabay, Unsplash, places like that for different backgrounds that are free for you to use. And then of course there's tons of sellers on places like Creative Market and Etsy that have really, really cool backgrounds. But these are just the ones that I'm going to be using today. So I'm actually going to grab this purplish one right here and I'm just going to drag it in to my canvas in Procreate and close out of my files app. So now we have this square and obviously we want it to be a rectangle. So I'm just going to rotate this because I want my slats going horizontally and what I've found with these wooden textures and it may vary depending on what backgrounds you're using. Um, for example, I could size it all proportionally, but then I just have like very thick planks. And I don't necessarily like that. I, I really like having the three distinct planks there. So I've just been kind of dragging them out. And I know that it distorts the image a little bit, but I feel like with wood like this, a little distortion is fine. And you're not gonna really notice because it's just the backdrop to what we're doing here. All right, so next step for me is to add the cover of my notebook. So depending on where you got your journal, I should have just left files open. Depending on where you got your journal or planner, it may have come with a cover. Uh, if not, you could absolutely design your own or there's a ton of shops out there that sell just the covers as well. 
So I'm gonna go to Digital Planner. Oh gosh, where do I have those saved? I think it's under New Planners. <laughs> yep, covers, perfect. So these are all the covers that I have for uh, my original planners and notebooks. So I think I'm gonna work with, let's see, what color should we work with today? I'm gonna work with the sea foam. So I'm actually just gonna drag this over. There we go, so that is imported. And I'm gonna tap on this arrow to kind of release that selection so I can play with it. Now, you'll notice with these covers, if you got them from my shop, they do have a little bit of a background on them. They have kind of this light gray that's meant to match the light gray of the GoodNotes app, and then they have a little bit of a drop shadow. So I actually wanna get rid of that background. So the way that I am going to do that is to hit my selection tool right here, the S, and I'm gonna to go to automatic. What automatic does is when you tap on the screen, it's going to automatically select everything that's nearby that color. So if I tap here, you'll see that it automatically selected in black all of that gray background. But we still have our drop shadow here. So I'm just going to keep tapping to keep selecting all of that so that the only thing that's not selected is our notebook. Uh, one thing you might notice here, I'm gonna double finger tap to undo a little bit. One thing you might notice is if your threshold is too high, for example, you might get something like this where it's trying to select parts of the notebook as well. Really simple fix, just double tap to undo. Tap and drag your pen until you see it only selecting the areas that you want it to select. So you may have to play around with this and adjust your threshold until you get it just right. So I'm gonna come in here, tap again, see that threshold is too high, it started selecting parts of the notebook. So I'm gonna bring it down, down, down. All right, and once you have everything selected, you can just swipe down with three fingers and hit cut and that is going to remove that area that you have selected. So now you are just left with, for example, if we get rid of this background, we are just left with the notebook with no shadow, no background, nothing. All right, so now we're gonna play around with the size of this notebook. And we wanna keep magnetics turned on here when you use your selection tool. And just bring it up to whatever size you want your notebook to be. I'm gonna make this one pretty large, and I think I'm gonna tilt it a little bit, like so, and put it over here on the left-hand side. And just keep playing around with it until you're happy with where it's positioned. And then it does look a little flat against this background, so I wanna create a drop shadow. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on that notebook layer, I'm gonna to swipe to the left and hit duplicate. So we now have two copies of that notebook. And now I'm gonna grab this bottom layer, tap, Select Alpha Lock, grab black from my color palette, and tap and fill layer. So now we have a black layer underneath this notebook, so you can see it right there. And then to create the shadow, we're just gonna add a little Gaussian blur. So we need to make sure we turn off the Alpha Lock first. Go to your little wand tool up there, select Gaussian Blur. We're just gonna slide to adjust to create a cool little shadow behind our notebook. I think I'm gonna go about 23%. That looks pretty good. So now it looks like the notebook is actually sitting on the desk. It's a little more 3D basically. All right, so up next, I think we should play around with creating that sheet of paper, kind of that torn out sheet of paper that I had in the other one. So let's actually bring in, let's go back to Good Notes. And I wanna grab just a blank graph piece of paper. So I'm gonna to go to my extras tab and grab a graph page. And I'm gonna export this again as an image. Export, save, go back into Procreate. And I'm gonna bring that photo in. So add, insert a photo. There we go. So now we have this graph paper to work with, but all we want is the page. We don't want the rest of the notebook. So this is how we're gonna select that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hide or put my notebook layer underneath there so you can see what I'm doing. 
All right, so on this inserted image that we have, we just want to select this notebook page. So same way we selected out the shadow and background from the notebook, we're going to go to our selection tool, make sure we're on automatic, and let's just tap somewhere on this page and see how our selection threshold is. It is pretty, pretty good. Uh, and all I'm selecting is kind of this outline, and I'll show you how we're going to get the graph in there here in just a second. All right, so I'm going to swipe down with three fingers because I feel like that looks pretty good. And instead of cutting this out, I want to cut and paste. So that's going to put it on a new layer. There we go. So you'll see that we have a layer that is just the outline of our notebook paper. But I also want to have my graph paper in there. So I'm going to come back to my image layer that I just imported from the planner, which is what we're looking at right now. And I'm going to use my selection tool again, but this time I'm going to go with a rectangle. And I'm just going to drag out a rectangle over this graph paper. And again, I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and cut and paste. Okay, so now we have three layers. We have this notebook layer, which I'm going to turn off. We also have our graph layer, which you can see there. And then we have the outline layer that we selected in the first step. So now we have our paper completely removed. We can delete that background and merge these two together. And now we have a free piece of notebook paper. How cool is that? All right, so I am going to bring this back up in size a little bit. I'm going to rotate the other way. And I think I want this to be under my notebook. So I'm going to do that in the layers panel and just bring it under my notebook there. And then I also want this piece of paper to have a little bit of a shadow under it because again, it looks kind of flat just laying there as is. So same process, I'm going to duplicate the bottom layer. I'm going to alpha lock, fill with black, take my alpha lock off, and give it a bit of a Gaussian blur. And that looks pretty good. So now we have our notebook, we have a loose leaf sheet of paper and our background. And what I like to do at this point is start kind of merging things. We do have a lot of layers available in Procreate, but once I know that I have things where I want them, I usually go ahead and merge them together. Totally up to you if you want to leave it more editable or if you're okay with merging things. So I've got my notebook paper. I've got my notebook cover and I'm not going to merge these into the background quite yet because I may want to, you know, pinch and zoom, rotate these around, move them, do whatever. All right. Now I think I want to add a fun design to the cover of my notebook. So I think I'm going to bring in a sketch. Let's go to my gallery here and Let's see what kind of fun sketches I have. This is kind of some of my random, some of my random artwork, but I created this sketch of mountains the other day, and I think I want to bring this in. Let's turn off the background so it's a transparent image. And instead of saving this to my camera roll, all I'm going to do is just copy the canvas. So I'm going to copy canvas here, go back to my gallery. And you could do this with any sketch, either of your own, something that you bought online, or any transparent image, really. All right, so I have that copied from my other canvas. So now I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and paste. And we have our little sketch here. And I want that to be on top of my notebook. So I'm going to drag that layer up on top, bring this over, and rotate it. Might even make it a little larger. That looks pretty good. All right, now let's say I don't want it to look like just this black sketch on here. This is where it's really fun to start playing around with some blend modes. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. On your layer, if you hit this little N, that is gonna take you to your blend mode panel. N stands for normal, which is what all layers are set up when they're created, but there's a bunch of different layer options that you can play around with. So I like to kind of just click through and see what looks cool and what looks best. And different blend modes kind of have different effects depending on what colors you have on screen, what kind of textures. So it's something to play around with. It's not always going to be exactly the same for you. So I just want to zoom in here real quick so you can see, oops, so you can see what's happening when I change 
this blend mode. So here's, let's find a good like dark section of my sketch right here. There we go. And let's change this to multiply. Now what you'll see or <laughs> probably won't see too much of because I'm using black is that it actually starts to pick up the texture underneath it. But in the different blend modes, Here's a cool one, overlay. So yeah, you can kind of just play around with the different blend modes until you find something that you really like. And I kind of like this subtle blueness <laughs> that happened here when I changed that blend mode. And I am gonna move this up a tiny bit. I feel like it needs to be up there. But yeah, playing around with those blend modes and kind of seeing what kind of different effects you can create. This just looks so cool because it kind of took all of those black lines and you can really see all of the texture underneath them and that blue like now kind of matches perfectly whereas the black was kind of like high contrast if that makes sense uh, so yeah that's one way that I like to play around with designing my covers there another thing I like to do is put a little label on the bottom of my cover just to kind of show at a glance what notebook this is. So I have actually, again, I purchased these from Creative Market, but they're really cool little paper strips. And let's see if I can find them here. I think I have it in other artists. Here we go. From Creative Market, where are you? Is it old home papers? No, nope, paper strips. I think this is the one. Again, I'll try to link everything down below for you. But these are just cool little, almost like little scrapbooky paper strips. And I really love, love, love these solid colored ones. I think with this one, I'm gonna go with something kind of peachy. There we go. And again, I'm just gonna bring this around position it where I want it. Maybe even make this one a little larger. There we go. And again, I want it to have a little bit of blur in the background, just so it doesn't look like such a flat piece of paper on top of the notebook there. So just like we've done in the past, duplicate the bottom one. I'm gonna alpha lock, fill it with black, Remove the alpha lock and give it a tiny bit of Gaussian blur. Not too much on this one. There we go. Done. And now I can merge those together because I know that's the tape and its shadow. And then on top of that, I'm going to write whatever this notebook is for. So let me go into my favorites. Let me grab a good pen. I'm going to grab my monoline brush here and let's just say that this is a hiking because that's what I'm totally into right now. <laughs> Make this a little bit larger. I kind of like this to look like Sharpie. <laughs> Let's say this is hiking 2019. All right, now you'll notice that this is writing just directly over that. It doesn't really look like it's blending into the paper. So again, we're gonna play around with those blend modes. And my favorite for something like this is multiply, but keep in mind with multiply and black, it's not gonna really show up super well. So I'm actually gonna change this to a slightly different color. Um, I'm actually going to pick up one of the colors from the screen here and I'm going to make it a little bit darker like so and then I'm going to tap on this layer, alpha lock it, fill layer, there we go and now I'm going to set this to multiply and there you go. Now it looks really, really cool. You can kind of see some of the paper texture underneath there. And then you can play around more with this color if you don't like the red on red, for example. Maybe you can do a darker, like brownish gray. See how that looks. 
that looks really cool actually. So yeah, you can play around and have fun with it. So I like the way that looks there. And then the other thing I like to do is just bring in kind of some fun elements. So I have a pretty huge collection of different elements. And a lot of them that I have are from Tiny Turtle Designs. She has some amazing like digital scrapbooking kits that I really love. And she has some pretty amazing free kits as well. So really any clip art or any cool uh, stickers that you want to bring in to decorate. It's all the same process here. You can even get things from places like PNG tree. But anyway, the ones I really like to use are tiny turtle designs and I don't have a ton of them on here. Most of them are not unzipped yet, but let's go to kits and let me pick one that I know is a free kit. I think it's afternoon blues. Oh gosh. Now I'm not going to remember which ones were the free kits. Anyway, I know that she does have a ton of free kits, but let's play around with Erilyn because I love, love, love this kit. I don't know if it really fits the hiking theme, but anyway, these are all transparent PNGs. And now that I'm looking at this balloon, how pretty would this be on the cover here? I'm going to play around with that for just a second. Let's turn off this sketch layer that I brought in and let's bring this balloon in on top here. All right. I'm going to bring it way up in size. pretty is that? Alright, so I'm going to put that right there and I'm going to play around again with the blend mode to kind of see, see that multiply. Look how it brought in all of that texture from the notebook. The linear burn might be even prettier. Color burn, darken. Ooh, I like how that looks too. <laughs> I could play around all day with all the different settings here. That looks really, really pretty as well. But I think my favorite is still the multiply because it just brings in a little bit of texture there. Gosh, that is really pretty. Okay, <laughs> so since I got distracted, let's go and let's play around with just adding some little elements like stuff that might be laying around on a desk maybe. Uh, let's say maybe you have a Oh, look at this little bee. I love it. All right, so I have this little bee brooch just hanging out <laughs> on my desk. And let's say that it's down here. That looks pretty good. And then again, what I do with like every single element that I want it to look more 3D, like it's just popping off the page instead of a flat sticker, I will go in and duplicate that layer for the bottom one, a little alpha lock. Make sure you have black as your selected color. Fill layer. Get rid of the alpha lock. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. So it has a little shadow underneath it. And then I'll merge that down so that, that B and its shadow are connected. So now we have this gorgeous little B brooch down there. Let's see what else is in this kit that would be cool. Uh, she has all kinds of cool stuff too, like frames, like you could frame a quote or something on your desk. I think this is actually the kit I used for that Kamari journal that I showed as well. I just really love this one. Uh, let's say that, let's look at these beads kind of up close and personal. Those are kind of cool. Let's say you have some beads kind of off to the side maybe. And this is the thing too, like think about how you can use your elements in different ways. Like you don't have to use the whole element. Maybe just a little piece of it is hanging out on your desk over here, say like right there. And then that same method, I'm going to duplicate, alpha lock, fill with black, remove the alpha lock and give it a Gaussian blur. So it looks a little more 3D there. And this is where I just have fun with it. Play around with different elements and things. 
All right, so I'm going to remove this. So you get the idea. You can play around with a bunch of different elements, give them a little drop shadow, and create, create, create to your heart's content. And then, of course, you can write on top of your little blank sheet of paper, whatever you want to do. And then once you're finally happy with your final design, it's really, really simple to add this in as a cover in GoodNotes. So we're going to save this as a PNG and just save to our camera roll right there. And to add this in GoodNotes, we want this to be the cover. So we're right here at the front of our planner. We're going to hit the plus symbol in the top right hand side. And we're going to say before current page, we're going to add an image. Go to photos and select the image that we just created. And now we have created this page as our cover. And I actually need to remove my old cover here. So I'm going to go to my thumbnails. I'm going to select my old cover and delete it. Done and close. All right, so now this is the cover of our planner. So if I go back in, you'll see that we have our brand new cover right there. And it will always be the very first page of your planner. All right, y'all, I hope that helped and I hope you had fun decorating a journal cover with me. If you have questions on any of this, I know some of it I may have gone through a little quickly, but just let me know down below and I'll be happy to jump in and answer any questions for you down there. I hope you're having an amazing day and I hope to see you soon. Bye y'all.